Wednesday night at 11.30, so you know it's time for the Delco Duo. I am one half of the Delco Duo, Monica Cryan. Hey. And I'm the other half, the other half that's a fill-in. I'm Kelsey Fabian. and I'm filling in for Jenna Meisner while she's on her maternity leave. And loving it. Yeah. We're having so much fun. It's so fun. We had one of our best episodes last week with um, Eddie. Eddie, wait, I have an important question. Do you think now if like you or Jenna are off, I get to be the fill-in? Absolutely. Woo it's not even a fill-in. You're just, you're just here. I'm just, you're doing I'm your I'm thing. I'm just a member. You're a Delco girl. I am now, yeah. Yeah, so this obviously makes sense. So the show is, is we take your questions, your concerns, and then we give a little bit of advice on it. But before we get to that, let's get to the debrief. I'm sure there are some people out there that are like, whoa, everything looks so different because they're, especially with the Delco Duo, our set was so dark. Yes. Which is, which was fun for like a Saturday show. Right. So now it's all, all these, new. This bright lights, with good lighting. How good Love do we it. look? Love it. So we are on a new set because our old set at PHL 17 is gone. This old thing. Literally this old thing. It, yeah. It just was time. It was time. This it's getting a facelift. Getting a huge facelift. So this is what it used to look like. Um, but <laughs> that was that was the set. But the entire studio is getting a new facelift. We're getting new floors. We're getting new lighting. Yeah. So they and then part of that was the Delco duo was on that set. Yeah. Um, so me and Mike that picture we pretended to take like Reno day or demo day. You know how Chip Gaines does that. Yes. Yeah. Get demo your day. get your frustration out. Yes. Um, and I feel like I did. I, I cleaned house. I was like, let's be done with this. Yeah. The set was old. Even when I got here, it was old. Yeah. I'm excited for the new set. Yeah. I don't know how long it'll take. So we, could, we, don't know, we don't have answers to that. But I am excited for once it finally is done. Like, think of this. Like, a lot of people who had renovations in their house. There's always delays. There's always <laughs> delays. There's always setback after setback after yeah. setback. Imagine doing that for an entire news station. This is going to be months. Yes. Which is, at first I would say, like, let's not tell our viewers that it's going to take months because they're not going to tune in. But this this temporary set is it nicer than the old one. Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> so, like, here we are. I actually feel like I'm kind of getting newsy, though. I'm going to have a hard time doing Delco Duo on this. I'm going to be like, because of the news desk. News. Yeah. Harris, Philadelphia, well, and Shades. That's why I wanted to put my hair up in a ponytail because I feel newsy right now. I know I'm in a sweatshirt, but I still felt newsy. I was it like, should I in a ponytail? It feels weird to be like in our dress down clothes on the desk. Yeah. And I don't know how to like get out of that news kind of feel. Right. But um, we're going to have fun. And then I think the new set is going to be state of the art, all fun, all new. It'll be fabulous. Yeah. I, I'm not, we're still not sure what we're going to do with the Delco duo. What, It'll like, have what a set? home somewhere. Yeah. But it doesn't take that much. It's literally just two stools, these a high top, and these microphones, which I love because I love gold microphones. Yeah, I like that they're gold too. Like you can never go back to regular. Do you sing for us? Like what, what's your go-to karaoke song? I hate karaoke. It's one of my biggest fears in life. I'm not kidding you. If you told me I needed to do karaoke to stay on the show, I would just walk out. I'm not kidding you. I hate karaoke. And, and then here's and everyone me. is so mind-blown. If mind you told blown. me I couldn't do karaoke to stay on the show, I'm out. Well, I no one can understand karaoke. the concept of me not liking karaoke because they think that because I'm on TV yeah. that I should be comfortable just doing anything in front of people, and that is not the case. Karaoke for Singing me is, is terrifying. No, I'm out. Um, I, I've done karaoke a bunch because I live for karaoke. If you... I can be a great hype man. I will go and support you and watch you. Should you should be but my I'm backup not, singer. Nope, I don't want to... I'll just sit and watch. And okay. <laughs> um, but I think the issue is, is I get like super confident at a karaoke bar. So I'll pick really hard songs. Like I'm doing Whitney Houston, <laughs> Celine Dion, Mariah Carey, and then I sound terrible compared to the divas and everyone's like, boo, get off the stage. Yeah, I'm the opposite. I'm not super confident at a karaoke bar. Okay, so we just got into karaoke. But anyway, <laughs> this is the new set temporarily for quite a while is what we're thinking. So hope you enjoy it because we are. We're having fun with yeah, it. it is fun. Um, love it, but um, I got to get out of my head for the newsy thing, the newsy thing. All right, let's get right now to our first topic of the evening. This is Kate from Collingdale. She just says beach etiquette. Blasting radios, parking your chair six inches from someone else, etc. So I guess like she's asking, what is beach etiquette and what are your pet peeves? And I do think that's interesting. What are some of your pet peeves for the beach? Blasting the radio. 
I can't stand it. I can't. I can't stand it because I just think it's inconsiderate. What makes yeah. you assume that everyone else on the beach wants to hear whatever you're listening to? It makes no sense. I, I don't mind noise. You're obviously going to hear noise on the beach. L you can have the loudest conversation, and I can't hear it. The waves are drowning it out. Music, you can't unhear. It's and the just last time happen. I was at the beach and someone was playing music out loud, it was EDM. I'm just trying to be peaceful and read my book and like enjoy the day. I don't want to hear your EDM. I don't want to. I I think it's. I'm trying not to sound old lady because at times, like I've I've been on the beach and my mom will be like, Oh my gosh, how loud is that music? And I'm like, Mom, just relax. Like, don't be old. You know what I mean? Don't. But like, actually, it's very, very rude to blast your radio. You can play that at a level that you and your friends can hear that nobody else can. It, the beach is white noise. That's what it is. So yeah. the fact that I can hear your music is saying that you're blasting it way too loud for the fact that someone like a, a few, you know, feet down can hear it. Yeah. It should be blocked out by the waves. That's the whole and point. And I don't even think it's like being old. I've always hated it. I can remember yeah. like being in college and being like, oh, I don't want to hear the music they're listening to. Right. It's not music I want to hear. Exactly. It's, it's the equivalent of going to a restaurant, a big restaurant, it being crowded and telling everyone, this is what I like, so everybody at the restaurant's going to eat the same thing <laughs> right. I'm ordering. <laughs> everyone's eating spaghetti, whether you like spaghetti <laughs> or, or not. I really like salmon, so everyone's gonna get a stinky fish tonight. <laughs> like, do, don't do that. No one wants to eat what you're eating. No one wants to listen to what you're listening. It could, you might think that what you have is really cool, Yeah. but it's it, everybody has a different choice and preference of what they wanna hear. Do not blast your music. Play it at a, at a level that only you can hear. Um, so yeah, don't blast the music. Parking your chair six feet from another group, it's annoying. Sometimes if it's like, unavoidable. It's unavoidable. Dep like if it's 4th of July weekend. Ocean City, New Jersey, yeah. 4th of July weekend. You can't even get six inches. You're sitting in someone's lap. You're lucky to get <laughs> on someone's lap. Yeah. Like, but I do think if you walk down to the beach and there is a lot of space, don't move further away. Right. So beach etiquette is, is do what you can for, for right. spacing, but music should be low so that you can hear it. Also, I am, a, I am really now that I have kids, if it has curses, out of here. Yeah. No, 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 no. No curses on the beach. That's ridiculous. I don't want my kids listening to that music. I yeah. don't like that. I think that's really rude. I think there's a lot of rules to beach etiquette. Yeah. And more people They're, need to follow them. They do. <laughs> they do. Be considerate. All right. Next up, we've got an issue about a neighbor just like intruding in. So make sure you stay tuned to this one. We've got advice for you. We are back. This is the Delco Duo, where you send us your problems, looking for advice, and we give you advice with a Delco twist. Yes, and we keep you completely anonymous and assign you to a Delco town. But before, we got to get to the main line. You know, I know Delco's like, what, main line? But you were recently food shopping. I was. And guess who she bumped into? Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley was just strolling through an Acme. I won't say which one, just in case, you know, he, want, he wants anonymity. His, right, but he was just strolling through Acme. And I will say I don't know sports players' faces that often. Well, especially but, if you're not looking for them. Right, but I was just pushing my cart down the aisle and I was like, was that Charles Barkley? So then I Googled him quick to make sure I was thinking Oh my God, I can't, believe, I can't believe you didn't like immediately. I I'm knew like, it Charles was, like, but, I, but it was so bizarre for me to see him at this random Acme that I was like, I have to Google it to make sure I'm actually seeing Charles Barkley. And he's tall, but he's not insanely tall that you're I like, I was gonna say. To be. He's probably like, like, he's like a six, players. five, six, six, but you're thinking like seven foot, you would definitely know. Six, five, people are six, five. Well, that's why, you know, it was always so funny because like, I would think immediately you would recognize him. I He's, did, but I couldn't believe that he would be at this Acme that I had to Google to make sure I was sane. Yeah, because it was always so funny, and this is just, but like when I was at Penn State, you know, most of us are just walking around like, 
regular Joe Schmo right. kids at school, but you could always tell the football players because they were just big dudes. Right. And you'd be and the, and then of course they're wearing like their Nittany Lions gear. But you you would just be walking and all of a sudden you just see this big dude and you're like, that's a, that's a football player. Right. But uh, Charles Barkley, that's wild. Yeah, I mean I recognized him instantly. I just needed to like make sure I wasn't crazy. And then the cashier had said to me, like, oh you know that's Charles Barkley. And I was like, yeah, that's who I thought it was. And she was like, yeah, he spends his summers here. And I then I Googled that because I was like, are we sure? He spends his summers. And he spends his off season, like for off season basketball season, the main line. Because he played here for so long, he loves it. And I love the main line, and I agree. Beautiful houses, and I'm sure he has all the amenities. He's got this amazing pool. I am positive. I'm not 100%, but like 99% <laughs> positive. He probably has like this amazing pool, all the amenities. But what is it about the main line that you're like, that's where I'm going to choose to summer? I've never heard mm -hmm. someone like, I'm going to summer on the main line. I mean, <laughs> I especially it. when you could have probably anything at your disposal. Like, he could summer in Greece. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he, he, could he could summer, summer on a yacht. He could summer down the shore. I don't understand. But, but even things, I mean, love the shore, but he could do much better than the shore. Like, he could, <laughs> he could no, like see, said, that to me. he could have a yacht in Italy for the summer. That to me, I'm like, if people are like, oh, if you won the lottery, what are you doing with it? I'm buying a huge, huge place on the bay at the shore. That's all I want. That's all nice. I want in life. So I kind of understand that, but I'm not, I'm not going to say, you know what, if I win the lottery, I'm going to buy that house. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even think of a mainline town. I'm going to buy that house in Gladwin. <laughs> I Maybe know. I would. Maybe I would. But I mean, Gladwin's really I will nice. say... Charles Barkley was lovely. He kept saying hi to everyone at the grocery wow. store. The workers there, the employees, they were telling me that he's the nicest guy and he's super friendly to everyone. I watched some people come up and tell him how like they were big fans. He took time to talk to them. So, real guy. We yeah. love it. It was Charles, the first celebrity I've ever seen at Charles the grocery Barkley, store. Charles Barkley, if you're watching tonight. <laughs> you want to be on the Delco Duo, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew we were neighbors? All right, our first issue is coming from Luigi from Lansdowne. So my wife and I were moving into our new home. We had some workers slash movers in and out of the house, and the door was open. To introduce himself, our new neighbor just walked through the open door. My wife and I were confused at first, thinking he was a mover, but then felt uncomfortable when we realized he just let himself in. That's, I think, weird that he let himself in and just to introduce himself. I think it's weird, but I also think he probably thought the door's open, movers are going in and out, I'll just pop in and be like, hey, I'm your yeah. neighbor. Like, I think it's weirder. It would have been really weird to me if the door was closed and he just opened it and came in. Oh, but he sure. probably saw people That's going illegal. in. Yeah, <laughs> but he saw, probably saw people going in and out Yeah, and was like, oh, I'll just introduce myself. Yeah, I, I just, I think sometimes it's like them wanting to establish like, hey, this is how I'm going to act. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to be that neighbor that just walks in. So if you don't want that kind of neighbor, some people do want that kind of neighbor. Yeah. Some people love the idea. If you're my neighbor, I do not. I do not want that kind of neighbor. Well, then in that case, like, you need to set some boundaries. Yeah. Because if you, the first time they walk in, if they feel welcome, they'll continue to do that, yeah. I think. Yeah, I totally understand why that was startling to the couple. Like, right. that would be startling. But. So if it's startling, just be like, whoa, I, at that point I would have been like, whoa, we're not used to that. Something like that, you know. Or you could just lock your doors. <laughs> make, sure that, make sure that they can never just walk in. But then at a certain point, like you gotta, you gotta think like, I, I, don't, I shouldn't need to lock my doors 24 seven. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm home, yeah. if I'm home, our doors are unlocked. Yeah. That's just how, how we live. You know, the kids are in and out, I'm in and out, but I don't wanna have to be worried That's that someone's so just gonna walk in. Right. I, uh, I'm doing things that I don't want people to see. Or if all your the time. garage door is open and you're in the garage doing something, someone just comes in. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm just like, you know, let them know. But the only thing I can say is when we moved into our new home, I was sad because we were outside a lot mm -hmm. and no one came up and said anything to us uh. when we first moved in. I didn't like that either. I thought that that was really sad. Like I'm, I, I kind of sat out there waiting for neighbors to come up. I am, I'm a big believer in, in bringing that casserole. I don't know why, I don't even like casserole. See, that's interesting, because if I were your neighbor, I probably wouldn't have come over to you in your drive. CJ would have, my husband yes. would have. 
I would, and he would have come home and been like, oh, I met the new neighbor. And I'd be like, okay. But I'm hanging in the driveway totally open for anyone to come to the driveway. But if, if I'm I, inside, don't don't come into my house. Yeah, if I would have passed you like walking my dog, I would have said hi. But I don't think I would have made a point to come over to your driveway. I so would, that's interesting that I you like that. I would highly, highly recommend doing that. Not not for, you know, you don't have to. But, but for those of you who like and enjoy your neighbors, bring something to them the day they move in. You don't have to go, you don't have to take up too much time, but just, hey, wanted to drop this off. Love to see you in the neighborhood. Our neighbors, I will say, which I appreciate, they just dropped off a bottle of champagne for us. See? That's no a one did that. That's a lovely gift. That's a lovely gift. No one did that. I, let's go back to that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we solved two of your issues. Our next issue coming up is one of our own. So make sure you stay tuned for that. It's Saturday night, so time for more Delco Duo. We keep everyone anonymous when you write in, but now it's our turn, so there's no anonymity here. Let's see one of our issues. What's Monica crying about? <laughs> yeah, I, I think the issue is, it's the beginning of August. Mm -hmm. We've got the rest of August summer just to enjoy, but my husband already is bringing up football and, and talking incessantly about it. I constantly am woken up in the morning by, I don't know if CJ does this, but Eugene watches a lot of high school football players, which I think is <laughs> no. so weird. <laughs> CJ but doesn't do that. He does. My husband will watch high school football kids playing that Penn State's currently don't, recruiting. Don't say your husband watches kids. I know, he's watching kids. <laughs> I think it's so creepy. I'm like, hon, stop watching high schoolers. Like, oh, well, he's a really good prospect for Penn State this year. And I'm like, and so all I hear, I wake up in the morning and I hear just burp, like the whistle that the coaches yeah. are whistling at them. And that's what I wake up to every morning. Well, CJ doesn't have a diehard, like, college team. Like, he's a Penn State fan, but he's not, like... Right, that would be his number one It would, team. but he's not diehard, like... Eugene is when it comes he's diehard Bills like Buffalo Bills so if, if for him he right. watches college football but he's not as into it as Eugene he's more into NFL um Eugene can actually name almost every he can obviously list every Penn State football player but he can list all of their recruits like the guys that they're yeah. actively recruiting and their 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 height their weight their stat <laughs> I'm like that's what, and, and then he'll watch a video of them. I swear he should work for the team. But so anyway, it, it's the beginning of August and he's already like, best recruiting class. This is our year. And he does this every summer. And I try to remind him that you do this every summer. <laughs> it's it, too early August for me. 1st rolls around and the guy's like, this is it. This is our year. We're going places. And I'm like, bud, you really, you got to reel it in, man. You got to reel it in. Because I I and, will. And yes, our our uh, our producer um, Steve is saying, "Oh, and Ohio State crushes your dreams because he's an Ohio State." Fan. <laughs> I was at that game last year. It did crush Eugene's Stop. dreams. Eugene was really. We were at that game, right? Did yeah, we, was we, game. we were at the Ohio State game. Yeah, we were there. You were there. And I don't then know we why met we up, go to the we, Ohio State game. And we met up with you after, and Eugene was in a foul mood. <laughs> he he was so grumpy. And I think that's the issue: is like if he could regulate his feelings fine let's be pumped up august 1st but the problem is is you get so pumped up and you get so excited every year just to be crushed by september october yeah. and uh, penn state they're great they're awesome but there's always that crushing game and it's just like and then he gets so mad i'm like you got to stop august 1st trying to hype everybody <laughs> else up because i'm not i'm not getting there with you that's funny. i'm not gonna get there. i will say my husband said to me the other day um we were just talking about like what else we have going on this summer, and he's like, "Oh, and don't forget, like the Friday of Labor Day weekend. Like I've always got that fantasy football draft." And I was like, "Oh God, oh, yeah. it's a month out, and I, I'm already being bothered by like the the game, like because what football rolls around, it's like you've got friends, they fr boys they want to watch you and want to go to yes. the bar and watch it. You got this, you've got that. He's a part of like three different fantasy leagues. He's got to go and do it, and I'm like, okay. I was like, it's. I'm not ready for you to tell me how occupied you're going to be already. But that's what I mean. It's like <laughs> it's way too early to start telling people how excited you are for football season. Yeah. I just, I, I think August 1st is too much. September. Well, and I, I appreciate my husband was letting me know well in advance that that Friday he will be out of commission because he's going to be doing that. But I'm like, okay, it's just a start. It's literally yeah, just fantasy. the start. And football for me, it's 
fun, it's exciting, but it's going to go until February. So it's just a whole season of excuses of it's reasons not, why you've got season. It's you've half got a year. Things to do. It's half a year. But, you know, like yeah. if we're doing August, September, October, November, December, January, February. Okay. Okay. Now we're talking seven months, guys. Well, and maybe seven months. you can relate to this. So like my husband, he's a Buffalo Bills fan. Die hard. He's not actually an Eagles fan. Now, he would pick the Eagles as like his second pick, right? Because yes. obviously living the area. But then when all of his guy friends want to do something for the Eagles game, he's like, well, I got to go. I'm like, you don't even like that team. You're, you're, you're not, not a, you're not, if you're not a fan. Right. Then you, you don't have to go. We can't block off that much time. For, right. Because now that's two teams. That's see, two teams. Because then he wants to get his friends together for the Bills Bills games. And his friends are like, sure, because it's an excuse to like get together. And I'm like, so, no, we can't do it all. Right. So your Bills and Eagles, see, we we are and and that but that's just Sunday or, or sometimes into Monday but the problem is is for us is I mean it's college it's yeah. college Saturday all day yeah. all day I mean we we revolve our whole Saturday around college and your household watching. is Penn State but then it's also Eagles Giants right Eagles Giants yeah. so NFC East <laughs> Just anybody who's playing NFC, we got to watch. But anyway, that's like a whole different thing is, is you know, that we will definitely be talking about as fall gets closer and closer. Yeah. The amount of time allotted to your weekends. for And I love football. I'm a huge football fan. And I love Penn State and I love Eagles. But I think August 1st, I'm not getting hyped up. <laughs> right. Stop showing me the pump Especially up Especially because then you got to be hyped September, does October, he, November, December, does, January. Does CJ make you watch the hype up videos that they have? No, and I'm thankful that he does not. And <laughs> every Saturday morning, I got to wake up and I got to watch that pump up video. No. like, oh, watch this. I'm like, it reminds me of the one that we watched last week. He knows that I would look at him and say, I don't care about this. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank God you're not watching high school kids run around. I'm glad around, I'm not married. That's to what you. I have. To I'm glad do. I'm not married to your husband because Ooh. I don't want to watch those videos. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so we've got Delco trivia, and the question is: This might be tough, but someone wrote this in, so I'll do it. Known for comedically crude and egotist persona, where was actor, writer, comedian W. C. Field born? <laughs> Kelsey. Hi. I do not know the answer to that. <laughs> All right, stick around for it. So we are really sending it back because this actor, W.C. Fields, William Claude Fields, uh, was born in Darby, Pennsylvania, Delaware County, in 1880. So I'm sure a lot of people are like, say what? With his top hat? Yes, so he, had a, he was... He was famously, he was really, really famous, really, really funny uh, comedian. But then also in the description, it says juggler. Hmm. Comedian, actor, juggler. And I was like, an impressive talent. <laughs> but I think that's such an old talent. Yes. Like, nowadays, you'd never be like, oh man, I'm a juggler. He's a great juggler. Yeah. He's a great juggler. Love W.C. Fields. Maybe uh, it's something you should take up. You could not only be a meteorologist, but also a juggler. No, I would be terrible <laughs> at that. But uh, yeah, so uh, Darby, Pennsylvania, W.C. Fields. Um, 1880. 1880. Woo! Woo! And I'm sure that's kind of the jokes that he would make. Woo! Woo! <laughs> I feel like that's what they... That was like a <laughs> joke back then in the day. Was it? Yes. He's, like the Three Stooges, their funniest thing even, is that they would go, Did you woo, even woo. hear his jokes? Everything 1880 was movies without sound. <laughs> no. No, he was... It was black and white. All of his stuff right. that I watched was black and white. But he had, famously had like a top hat and uh, he was... It was crazy. So anyway... Uh, Thank you for those of you who submitted your topics, your concerns, and even your trivia. We appreciate it all. We really do. Delco Duo at PHL17.com. Thanks for watching. Have a good Saturday night. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.